So I had an individual that came in and they wanted to sign up for jujitsu. The only concern they had was they weren't sure if they were in shape enough. So they, they said they wanted to lose five pounds and get a little bit more fit, more cardio. And that's when I realized there's a problem. No one should feel that way. Jiu-Jitsu is supposed to improve your life. You shouldn't feel like you have to be physical in order to do Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu is a language. Jiu-Jitsu is the most fluent way of speaking that language. Jiu-Jitsu is for everybody. Not everybody believes that anymore. That's where Jiu-Jitsu came in. So you have a very well-rounded jiu-jitsu, a broad knowledge of all the positions, but there's one that you are better at than anybody I know, and that's the reverse half guard position. So I want to look at a few of your competition uh, videos. We have three videos here to look at. Maybe you can just talk about what's going on. This first one, you're facing Michael Lange, another fantastic competitor. This just uh, so starts off in a double guard pull. Move forward a little bit. So double guard pull position, obviously both of you guys have a, a great guard. And here, you, you, are you trying to coax him into your half guard? Yeah, I think it, I, from what I remember, I think this is like a, the semi-finals, what, what is this term? It looks like... Uh, 2008. 2008, I, yes. This match, I think I was trying to pull him to my guard, engage in my game. He, he's a you know, one of the best guys, uh, in my opinion, on the lightweight history. And uh, he accomplished so many. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a great champion, great guy. And uh, his guard is really good, so I was trying to bring him on top of me to play my guard instead of go to his guard at that time. Right, so this is regular half guard right now, not quite reverse half guard. But uh, we'll see how he ends up in your strong position. So here you're gripping his uh, pants or his ankle tight, keeping him trapped in half guard. Yeah, he's putting a lot of pressure there, and trying to free his leg, you know, extending his whole body. You know, I was trying to, to keep his feet in between my legs, so he's squeezing my legs and also grabbing with my hand. Also you have his collar grip, and now he steps over to the reverse half guard position. Uh-huh. Yeah, that position there, I like a lot this position. I, in the beginning, I used to play a lot half guard. And one of the ways that they used to escape the, the half guard was going through the reverse half guard. Yep. You know, and then I started developing ways to to sweep people from there as well. Like you just did. Yeah, spending a lot of time there. And today, a lot of the setups that I use is to bring them to the reverse half guard more than stay on the deep half guard. Uh huh. And I see, and we will see later, that sometimes your opponent goes for the, half, the reverse half guard and sometimes you push them into that position. Yes. Now I'm going for a foot lock. It's a good attempt, but didn't quite work. But now <laughs> you end up right back. Yeah, it looks like, you see, guard. I'm going still try, like uh, grabbing the leg to go regular half guard. And yeah. now he steps over again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they step over the head, sometimes they step over like this. Because, like I said, it's a way to get out from the deep half guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people, you know, they do well on top of on this, on this position. They manage to pass the guard. And, you know, a lot of people would argue about the leg work, uh, but you have uh, you explained on the instructional that, that's going to come out very soon why you triangle your legs this way and not the other. A lot of people would think that that's wrong, but uh -huh. actually it's a great way. You go into great detail about why that's a better way. Yes, for example, right, the way he's passing right now, if he managed to bring me on my side, he's going to be able to free his foot. Mm -hmm. And uh, that left leg there, which it's like give me the keeps me flat mm -hmm. so he don't turn me, so it maintains the control of the guard. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people hear the maxim that uh, on half guard you should always be on your side, but here is evidence that there's a, every, a, every rule is made to be broken. Yes. Uh, this is a half guard where you want to be on yes. your back. Yes, reverse half guard is different. The reverse half guard, you know, to be offensive and to maintain the control, you have to be flat. Right. Regular half guard, you stay on your side, so it's a little bit different. All right, let's move on to the next one. 
Okay, and here you are at the 2012 pans facing off against Rodrigo Caporal, <coughs> another strong competitor. Just gonna fast forward to here. He's in your half guard and he's working the knee cut pass. And uh -huh. this is probably a, a common way for when guys decide, when they're trying to get the knee cut and it doesn't work, and then they'll back step to the reverse half guard. Is that what you found? Yes, I agree. So this position there, you know, it's a, it's a I feel comfortable from the bottom of, over there. And a lot of people, they step like this. They move up because they want to get away from that ha traditional like half guard I, with the lapel in between the legs. And most people would think that the guy on top is in a superior position here. Yes. The, the reason they change, they think this is a better spot. Mm -hmm. on, 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 the, on my case, I like them to go there. You know, I, I try to work the previous guard. If it works, great. But if they decided to move to that side over there, I also like. So I also let them go and adjust myself to work from there. Right, and uh, don't get us wrong, sometimes that can be a good way to pass the guard, to backstep. Yes, yes. For sure. But when you practice this a lot, you realize that it's not necessarily a bad position for the guy in the bottom, if you follow all the instructions. Now here, Capral is going for your arm. Uh-huh. Were you He's worried about that? He's trying to free the leg. He, I have a grip on his, on, his, on his collar, so I attempt the sweep, and uh, he, he managed to, to escape in base, but I still, controlling on my guard, still have the, the half guard. Notice now he has a very good control. And uh, he has the underhook, and I start grabbing the, the collar on top of his neck, and start grabbing the, the gi. So I see sometimes you use a gable grip, and sometimes you grab the lapel. Which do you feel is stronger? Depends, depends a lot. Sometimes, it, it, sometimes you, the grip gives you a better control. Sometimes you do the, the gamble grip. Most a lot of no gi, you do the this grip as well. On mm -hmm. that position right now, I am not in, in, a, in a very good spot, but I have I'm I'm planning to do some position. So right now I'm grabbing his collar. He's getting very high with his chest towards my upper body. So look, I'm trying to keep his foot locked as much as I can. And uh, sometimes I wait because they're gonna try to rush to take that foot out, and that's when it creates opportunities for sweeps and attacks. So right now he went to my, attack my arm, and I had the grip on his pants. So I managed to sit up and get on top and, and uh, score the sweep. Very nice. All right, let's move to one last one. Okay, here is the 2015 Worlds, where you fought Hoffa Mendes. And this was a quarterfinal match. And this is the first time facing him, right? Yes, it's like uh, I usually <coughs> compete at the lightweight division. In that tournament, I decided to drop to featherweight division, which was, which was more like a personal challenge for me to, to drop the weight and compete against different guys that I usually compete. And uh, that's the quarterfinals of the World Championship. And uh, I fate, I'm facing uh, Rafael Mendes, which, uh, you know, we don't need to... He don't need introduction. He's a he's a, one of the best in the world. He's the yeah. you know people say he's one of the best pound for pound jujitsu mm -hmm. in the world right now. And a lot of people talk about this match because I managed to, to sweep him. I, I end up losing that match, but I managed to sweep him twice. You know, and a lot of people is asking me about the, that sweep and. Um, I know that. Uh, you know, the things that the Mendes brothers like, uh, De La Hiva, Reverse De La Hiva, Baron Bull, it's kind of, it's out there. Everybody knows that that's their game. Do you think he knew that you liked Reverse Half Guard? I don't know. Good question. Maybe, maybe he, he knew. You know, he's, they are very smart. They, I believe they study opponents as well. And um, but I, he I ended also, up getting there, you know, as all, all the other guys, like, trying to, to pass. And I managed to sink the... The, my attacks with uh, his position. Mm -hmm. So notice right now, we're like a regular half guard, and grabbing the pants, like a deep half guard, controlling. He's a very good base, very strong, trying to grab my head. And now he's stepping over the head to go reverse half guard. How are you feeling at this moment? At this moment, you know, uh, like uh, I was just trying to put him at just to my best position. You so know. did you feel relief when he stepped over? A little bit, yeah, you know. And there you go, up and over. He had good, good grips on my, my pants that I couldn't bump my feet on the ground to sweep. But I did like a pendulum 
mm -hmm. uh, reverse half guard sweep where you don't require to explode much. You just use the, the body uh, weight to go on top of your partner. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful sweep that I've, I've felt firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are back. He's uh, attempting the knee cut again. Yeah, we kind of same position, but now he switched the other way. Instead of stepping over the head, it's a very common way as well. They step to the outside. Mm -hmm. And at this point, are you trying to just keep him in that position? Yes, I'm trying to keep his leg there and not giving any underhooks. He was going back and forth from one side to the other. And now he's back to like a regular half guard when I had his, his foot. So I keep my arms together for no underhooks. So now he steps over the head again. And I'm locking the, the foot, locking the legs. He has a very good grips under the legs. And again, to a lot of people, this is kind of a chaotic position, but for you, you've been here so many times, you must be feeling pretty good at this point. Yeah, yeah, I was feeling comfortable. You know, I was doing a lot of this position through the, the preparation for the tournament. I recognize it as one of the stronger positions on my game, so before big tournaments like this, I, I try to expend a lot of time doing specific trainings. So as far as right now, at that moment on the fight, I was feeling very comfortable. He was doing very smart things, which is grabbing my leg, like right now, wrapping my leg with the grip, which is, makes it harder for me to bump my feet on the ground. But as you can see, I use like a, a pendulum rolling backwards to go on top instead of the, the bump, the traditional the, the bump that I use over there mm -hmm. to get on top again. The very technical move, you don't require any strength or anything. You just, as you could see, you just roll over your back and you bring your partner's, your opponent's weight first and then you follow. Cool, well thank you very much for sharing uh, those positions with us. And uh, just to recap, you said that you formulated this because you've always liked half guard, and then you moved to deep half guard, and then you found that this was a natural result of people escaping your deep half guard, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So I was playing a lot of deep half guard, like facing my opponent on my side, and uh, more and more as I was getting good on that game, People were like stepping over, like uh, they, they didn't want to engage on that game with me. They, they stepping over and I ended up spending a lot of time there. I didn't want to let them pass and I was stuck there on the beginning. And then uh, little by little I was using hooks, bumping and, and uh, start sweeping people like naturally without thinking much about breaking down techniques. And then as more as was happening, I was trying to study, you know, to see like what like uh, step by step, what should I do in that, that position? And expending a lot of times, like many years, and you, you could see like matches like eight years ago, I'm using the technique, now 2015, using the same technique. And through the years you develop, you get better, you get sharp on the position. Nice, and yeah, I really see the reverse half guard as a critical component of a good half guard game. You know, I like half guard, but I think you need knee shield, deep half guard, regular half guard, inverted half guard, and reverse half guard. Because I agree. You, you never I, know. If you if you don't know what you do on that spot, I believe you, you have a gap. If you're a half guard player and you don't know what to do there, you're not comfortable there. It, it's a gap on your game. So you right. have to make sure you you know what to do in any any sport, any related positions to half guard. Right, and like you showed, uh, sometimes you put the guy in that position and sometimes he goes there. So you can't say, I don't like half guard, because somebody, sometimes they're gonna go there and you have yes. to deal with it. Yes, it is, some, in, in, it is uh, it's people that, they use good techniques to step there. Sometimes depend depends which setup you're using. If you do like sit up guard, this, that doesn't even have to be half guard. Sometimes you do sit up guard, they step. Mm -hmm. You do De La Riva guard, and they step, and they end up there in the reverse half guard. Right. Cool. Well, let's move on to some techniques. Nice. So for now, we've been talking a lot about reverse half guard, and um, some people might be confused about the terminology, but let's just get right into it. What is the most common way you find that people end up in reverse half guard? Uh, there, there's times that when they go, like it's a very uh, normal pass, they do the knee slice pass, and that's one, way, one of my favorite ways to go there. That can be, can be from De La Riva guard, from sit up guard, and I can, I can show you some so you'll see. Cool. So if you stand up all the way, 
jig. And I have a sit up guard like this. A lot of times when you, people on the bottom try to manage to sweep here, the person on top turns and go there. And this is like a reverse half guard, okay? Just so you, so you see. There is also like a people passing from, I have like a Z guard and they go from, from knee slice pass, like this, okay? There's a, a way here that a lot of people don't think about and uh, it's a good setup to bring them there. So let's begin here where you start bringing your knee. I still have my knee shield on your hip, right? You have this good grip here, you're controlling me. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this leg here, my right, my left leg, and I go under, okay? So you're almost like sitting on top of my leg. At this point, I need to be worried about the underhook. So I don't wanna give you that underhook. So I'm gonna make sure I grab your hip or I have the hand on the collar, okay? So right now I have the hand on the collar here, I have the sleeve. I'm gonna start lifting you when I place my foot on the mat and I raise my, my knee right here. And you are in a, in a position now, they're a little bit off balance. Mm -hmm. If you don't do anything, I'm gonna start driving you this way to go to the back. Normally, against high level guys, when you do this, what they're gonna do? The escape is to come there, okay? As soon as you begin to switch, I bring this arm over, and here we are, the reverse half guard. My, my hand is behind your shoulder here, I'm controlling your sleeve, and I lock my foot behind my knee, and I make sure my hip is inside, underneath your leg, and, and I am flat. And from here, we're gonna execute the sweep. Okay, so I, I'm gonna let go your arm here, I'm gonna connect my hands, and I raise my hip, follow my hip towards yours, and I turn, and end up on top. So let's do again. Let's say I'm here playing guard with you, and then you uh, knee slice pass guy, and you come here. So first I stop you there, right? So now what I'm gonna do, simultaneously when I take that knee out, I hide my underhook, okay? Then I start raising you like this. So as soon as they switch, I can use my leg to help you drive you there, and I come back and I lock. So I'm gonna establish my position here. Once I'm ready to, to sweep, I'm gonna connect my hands, keep your body attached to my body. So now as soon as I bump, I go on top of you. So I'm gonna do this. Not just the top position, and you end up in a good spot where it gives you the side control. If I establish here, if I, I can take advantage of this underhook to drive you that way, to initiate a back take as well. So there's many things you can do from that spot as well. And yeah, you're basically forcing me to go there. Because no one's going to stay uh, on all fours and let you take their back. So uh, yes. it's, it's brilliant how you make It's based easy. on the, the people's reaction. Right? Sometimes when I teach, I tell the guys like, uh, let's do this move based on a higher belt reaction. Because sometimes they don't know, could be a lower belt, they're going to stop right there and you end up going on the back. But I believe if it's a black belt level guy, they would step in order to maintain the top position and syncs well with the, the this technique. Cool. See you one last time. Full speed. So for now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you're not only a jiu-jitsu coach, you're also an MMA coach for a lot of super high level you know, UFC fighters. Um, can you show us something that you've uh, developed in uh, Jiu Jitsu for MMA? Yes, uh, let's do a technique on, against the wall. This is a technique uh, as well that uh, one day I was on the mat with Master Carlos Gracie Jr. And, uh, and we, he showed me a similar position in this, started showing me details on this and I like it a lot. And uh, it's when I try to take you down, you're sitting, you're sitting against the wall, trying to stand up. And I'm gonna manage to keep you down and end up with the submission. So lay down here, please, Jake, against the wall. Let's say I took you down here, okay? So it is a bad spot for you to be. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna try to stand up. Yeah, make a frame, come up on your elbow, to eventually come up all the way, all right? So I'm here with you. The first thing I'm gonna do, if I stay here with my head low, controlling your legs, it's easier for you to stand up. Go ahead and stand up. You see your hip goes, and then you go, and then I lost the position. When I identify that you're trying to stand up and you're ahead of me, 
I'm gonna come up on my feet and put my head on top of yours. Holding your knee. So now it's difficult for you to stand up. Try to stand up. So you cannot because you don't have your legs, all right? So my next step now is I'm gonna step out. Now I'm gonna do a leg drag using the, the wall to lock up here so you don't have, you cannot escape. So I have my, my foot in between your legs and I leg drag you right here. So in that case here, in an MMA scenario, it's a very good position for striking. And as, I, as you do striking, people are gonna cover their face, right, to protect. And then from here, we're gonna bring this arm through. From the leg drag, we're gonna go to the, to the choke. So I'm gonna control my hand right here, make sure I have a good lock on my hand, my head close to yours. Now I open my elbow here to give me a frame until I move and we finish the submission right there. So again, so initiate from here. I took you down, I am on top of you. Then you begin to try to stand up. I go first, and I put my head on the ground, on the, on the mat, okay? So now I move to the side, do the leg drag, and I keep this position tight here so you cannot move, all right? So as you begin to cover to defend yourself, I'm gonna go here, Make sure I have a good lock. The other hand comes under. Sometimes when you try to finish here and I move this way, some people are very explosive and they bump and they come on top of you. Okay, so go back there real quick. So before we begin, I'm gonna open this elbow. Try to come on top of me so I have a good frame. Now I have time to adjust my head on top of yours on the ground. And then from here, now I start locking and finish the submission. Very nice. So oftentimes in MMA, the guy on top wants to push the guy against the wall, but do you find that being against the wall can also help you to get up? Yes, the, the, the wall helps a lot them to stand up. You know, you can, you can start coming up. It gives, it's like almost somebody helping you to come up. And it's a lot of timing. If you, if you, have the, if you let the guy begin, initiate the position. If you stay behind, they're gonna stand up. And, and guys, they, they have very good skills skills to do that as well is a is a is a lot like whoever is ahead of the game so you see something happening you go first so to neutralize the people's uh, attack and you know and be one step ahead pretty much same as jiu-jitsu be one step ahead uh, kind of try to see what the guy's gonna do and uh, neutralize nice training against the wall is really good training not only for mma but also for self-defense you know if you think about if something goes down on the street, it's probably not going to be on a nice soft mat like this. It might be pushed against the wall. Yes, I, I sometimes at the school, I when they, when my students are training and they get close to the wall, we usually say, okay, get out of the wall, you know. Sometimes I let them play a little bit against the wall. Say, use the wall now, just to see what how they're gonna do. You know, what, what if you're training? What if you're in a self defense, and you have something like this? You have to be able to. Sometimes the wall can help you. Sometimes the wall gonna be against you. You know, it's all about practicing to, to you know, know what to do in that scenario. It's right. fun too, a little bit different, you know. Different, if yeah. you go to Jiu Jitsu tournament, you don't have the wall. Right. But if you experiment training, using the feet on the wall, it, it, it's fun, it's a little bit different. Right. Cool, well hey Fidel, thank you so much for coming thank, on today. Jake, thank you. If people want to find you online or in person, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at Gracie Bar headquarters. I'm, I'm teaching there full time, I'm there all, all the time. And uh, in my, you can, on my social media too, on Instagram, Facebook, Felipe Furão, at Felipe Furão, Twitter. All right, guys. See you next time on This Week in BJJ. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the show. Please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. We appreciate all that stuff. And we'll be back next time with episode 100 of This Week in BJJ. See you then.